What is going on guys? Today's the big day. We're priming it and starting it. So let's go through what we have really quickly so we can get to it. We have this really ghetto lead set up. Oh wow, that's really ghetto lead <laughs> set up. But just to know everything lights up, so that's lighting up. We have the full fuel return working right now. We have the fuel return connected. The upgrade injectors are disconnected right now so we can prime it. The fuel pressure regulator is on there which actually we need to set that also. But we'll do that in a bit after we prime the oil right here. So we got this going on right here. We got the AEM uh, air to fuel gauge really tackily wired in just to see if it works. And after two years, this is the first time this starts. Uh, the voltmeter works, so I guess I theoretically did that right. And this gauge is working and it's running 14 to 6.6. .6. So we should be good to start it. Well, not start it right now. We're gonna first just prime it, right? We're gonna prime it and get everything working properly. Feel free to comment and shit on it too. All right, so we got, we have everything disconnected fuel-wise. So just turn the key. Yep, and just prime the engine. Should we have something for fire ready? It's too late I, I for that. My, I don't got my fire extinguisher. It's too late for that. Oil and just send it. Oil and water don't mix. Yeah, just grow. So that's the oil pressure gauge. All right, hold up, Jose. The gauge isn't reading it. Well, I don't know if it, because it doesn't have oil in it. There's no oil pressure. Huh? There's no oil pressure. Why? Because we dropped, we drained the oil, the engine was apart. We need to build it up. Okay, I'll keep going then. Because there's nothing going up. Alright, stop it. It's not even moving a bit. Yeah, it's not moving, dude. Now to check for leaks. Try number two. Yeah. We don't know if it's pressurizing the oil. We need to take off that feed line and that's gonna let us know if oil is uh, flowing. flowing. That's like a 14. All right, so we had one really, really concerning moment right now. Right. We weren't building any, any oil pressure yeah. and we were worried. Look at that. Look at that. Let's pour that back in through the, through Damn, the, through the thing, dude. Um, so we weren't building any oil pressure and I looked through some forums and it actually says to unscrew it loose while you were priming it and it kind of spilled air pockets it spilled it. on the floor and on this guy's arm but that helped the oil pressure to pass through the filter and get up to the feed line for the turbo so we got oil pressure barely but we got some so we're just gonna keep cranking it until we see about 90 or 80 psi I guess I heard I mean I mean I saw 15 psi so we, that's we, when it's warm. Yeah, well, it's building up. But. It, that's when it's warm, Drew. If I looked it up for a 1ZZ, it's supposed to be about 90 PSI when cold, 15 when it's warm. So, good sign. Good sign, boys. Right. Let's prime it again. So, we know we disconnected the feed line and we know the turbo is getting fed. So, all right, we're going to crank. All right, we're gonna crank it just a little bit more. We good? It goes up to 80, yeah. All right. That should be good. All right, guys, so we have oil pressure. We know, we disconnected the feed line to check if the turbo is being fed. My heart is racing. Um, we checked, we disconnected the oil filter because we weren't getting any oil pressure. And I guess there might have been like air pockets, so unscrewing it poured a ton of oil out, but it did relieve that because we tried it again and we have oil pressure now. So, and I googled it, and on some Miata forums it said to do that. So, I mean, it's an engine after all, they should, they should be pretty similar throughout. 
And while we were priming the oil stuff, I disconnected the lines going to the feed and stuff in the actual fuel like assembly. So this I just disconnected it while we were priming and I didn't have to pull a fuse or anything. Uh, so now we're just going to prime the uh, fuel stuff and make sure there's no leaks because I mean we're ready to start I guess. Right? Yeah. But Andy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fuel is dangerous. Yeah of course it's dangerous. It's going to be more dangerous from a running E85 guy. Uh, yours truly is kind of a tired idiot because um, uh, right now when we were priming the fuel system we just had the fuel rail leak oil everywhere. I mean not oil but fuel. Or the nuts at and uh, luckily that's the only thing, at least from the fittings, it doesn't look like we leaked anything, but I guess that wasn't enough of a test of everything yeah, else. Where's the Allen key? Um, Where do you put the that's right there up top. And luckily I got these guys to keep me in check when I lose patience. Otherwise I would have probably walked oh, inside right now. Are you sure it's leaking? Yeah, go ahead and turn it, dude. So right now we're adjusting the fuel pressure regulator. As you can see right there, the stud is pretty low down. You just adjust it with an Allen key and then tighten down the nut to adjust it. To the right is to increase, to the left is to lower it. And on MWR's instructions, it says it needs to be around 41.5 to 50 PSI. So, I mean, we're starting it. So, I mean, I don't know much about the fuel pressure yet, but I'll adjust it as needed later. So, try it now. All right. So we basically just run a vacuum line from the fuel pressure regulator to a manifold source pressure. So I'm going to run it to that. Oh, you already put that in, Andy? Nice. So I'm just, this is just a temporary setup, obviously. We have the battery, like, well, the pressure gauge kind of like that's the overflow. Yeah. in there. So it shouldn't be like that. Uh, no, I think that's more like a vent tube, and honestly. Just so we bleed out the coolant system. Yeah, the old and just so it increases uh, fuel pressure, or so it builds up, all you need to do is like basically just off. Hold up. Just off and then over there. Are we good? Yeah. Alright. You think it's time? All right. Just 
to be completely honest, I had no idea what the hell I was doing. And I was literally just pressing buttons. Like, I didn't remember what initialized power of C meant or anything. So I was literally just messing stuff. And I'm pretty sure we were running on an NA tune at the time of starting it when it was kind of running. What I was doing in the following clip is basically just pressing the accelerator to keep it running. Also, a completely another reason why it wasn't running or idling by itself is because if you look at the gauge, it's reading some really, it's reading some really rich values, which I mean, basically, since I was running oh, 630 shit. CC injectors, I'm pretty sure the map I was on when the car was on was the like stock map I was using back in the day when my car was NA, which is basically just a stock power FC map which you should never do, but um, I learned my lesson. So that's probably why I wasn't idling, right, because it didn't even know I had 630cc injectors, and it was still running, like, I think they were, like, 230cc from the factory. So there was that, there was a ton of difference between the injectors. So essentially, um, I did a ton of stuff. Um, I even ended up learning a decent amount of how to use FC Edit and, like, actually adjust some injector scalings and just how to use the software and familiarize with it and um well at the moment i know a lot more than i knew when this was filmed and i know a lot more about the car now and basically my culprit was that you guys remember that um fuel filter i reused that i damaged when i was removing it yeah so essentially that was a problem um and also I, I guess the car was able to start because it was making like 30 psi of fuel pressure and you usually want about 40 and so basically it didn't want to start because if you look at that footage of my old fuel pump filter it was really floppy at the base where it connects to the fuel pump and that was probably causing a fuel pressure leak right there and it wasn't able to suck up well it wasn't able to make the pressure it needed to in order to start the car by itself. I ended up getting an MWR tune, and the car runs and drives great. Um, well, you can't put a lot of like load on the throttle because then it'll just blip out and just not want to do anything. But um, it it works, and um, it runs a lot better than it did in these clips that I showed you. And here's a few more of it uh, running and uh, idling. I was just saying so this here's finally the first start video I'm actually the cars actually I've run I've driven it like more than five times I, there's 15 miles on the original engine um, so you guys have a lot to look forward to in terms of content it doesn't oh wait never mind. so basically I'm just making this so you guys have I mean you guys probably have a lot of other creative like YouTube creators making content but like for those of you that are actually interested in my turbo build I thought I'd just upload this and uh, Christmas Day so you guys can see it enjoy it and it starts um, I did have an issue with fuel pressure and I guess that's what was causing it not to start even though it started with like fuel pressure not completely built up and I adjusted something in FC edit which is like the tuning software for the power fc somehow i made it start and it was running okay but now it's running like right it's running stoic at 14.7 if you guys don't know what that means don't worry i'll try to make it more comprehensive for you guys um but yeah so hope you guys enjoyed the video if you liked it go ahead and like it uh if you're it's your first time looking at the channel just go ahead and subscribe down there 
for more awesome Celica because let, let's be real how many built well okay I don't have cams but let's still say I'm built how many Celicas do you know out there that like did this on YouTube and like documented the whole thing because there it has been done before if you look through the new Celica forums everyone did it well, not everyone, but a few people boosted their onesies and built the engine, made some good power. But, I mean, there's no videos or decent quality videos of any of that. So, your guy right here decided to take one for the team and save the dragons. So, that kind of sounds weird. No, I'm saving the dragons by boosting the dragon, making it decent. I'm talking about that dragon. That one right there. Look at it. This was like on my second test drive. Look at it. Oh my God. Look at the intercooler right there. Dude. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. I uh, hope you guys have a happy new year. And we're about to drive the Red Celica. Stay tuned for that. Peace.